coming up, the ROTC programs climb 110 flights of stairs in honor of those who were lost in 9-11. And later, the financial aid budget shrinks after the Board of Regents requests less funding. Find out what this can mean for future students. Our very own Lucy Rodine goes behind enemy lines in preparation for the Cyhawk showdown this weekend. Does she make it out alive? Stay tuned in for sports. Will we finally start feeling fall temperatures or will the warm weather persist? In just a few minutes, I'll give you the latest on your weekend weather. All that and more coming up on this Thursday morning edition of DITV. Don't go anywhere. DITV starts right now. Good morning and thank you for tuning in. I'm Noah Gowdy. September 11th, 2001 is a day that many will never forget. It marks the deadliest terrorist attack to ever take place on U.S. soil. Many people around the United States took part yesterday in remembering those who were lost. I caught up with the ROTC programs here at the University of Iowa who are attempting to climb 110 flights of stairs just like the first responders did on that September day just 18 years ago. We just wanted to kind of get out there in remembrance of uh, the events that took place and get a nice workout in to kind of try and simulate the uh, pain that all the service members went through that day. And simulate the pain they did. Members of the University of Iowa Army ROTC program carried 35 pound rucksacks on their back as they climbed the stairs of Carver Hawkeye Arena in honor of those first responders who were lost. Now we all grown up in the aftermath of 9-11. And so it's just a great uh, get way to memorize uh, everything that those first responders and all the service members who came after them who sacrificed their lives for. Many local first responders and military veterans were also in attendance at the stair climb. They looked back on the memories they had from that day. To see images of a plane flying into it, I think were, it was surreal. It looked like a movie, but you knew it wasn't. Caposi was only in her second year of active duty when the attacks hit on that September 11th day. She went on to talk about how what she learned that day can really help the future generations of our military in preparing for those unknown situations. They could just be going in and showing up for what they think is a, your normal day of work and get a phone call that, hey, you need to pack your bags, you're deploying in 48, 72 hours, whatever it may be, and just have that mindset that you need to be prepared to go at any moment because you never know when you're going to get that call. It's a call that most do not look forward to but they are all ready to answer. Uh, the fact that we were attacked is just something that just motivates me that I think we need, people need to step up to, uh, that someone needs to step up to serve the country, to defend it, because we don't want something like that to happen again. The ROTC programs plan to continue this tradition for many years to come, with hopes of more people joining them year after year. After two years of requests for financial aid, the Board of Regents is using funding for student success initiatives rather than tuition assistance. President Bruce Harold says this may cause an increase in tuition in the future. We have Katie Ann McCarver standing by in the newsroom for more on the story. Katie, what are the changes in this year's state appropriation requests? Yes, yeah, so while the State Board of Regents is not requesting more money for financial aid from Iowa lawmakers, they are requesting an additional boost of $18 million to the general funding of each Regent University um, for student support and student services. So Katie, is there anything else the Regents are requesting money for? Uh, the University of Iowa is seeking approval from the Regents on an $88.7 million renovation plan for the Pentecost with McLean, McBride, and Jessup Halls. Thank you, Katie. And now, here in Iowa City, the weather seems to be warming up, unlike the fall temperatures are supposed to be. Let's toss it over to Claire in the weather studio to find out if that trend is going to continue. Claire? Noah, you are right. It has been very hot these past few days, and unfortunately, it will be a while before we get to feel those coveted fall temperatures. This morning, we have partly sunny skies with a temperature of 73 degrees. As the day goes on, temperatures will rise, reaching a high of 87. This evening, temperatures will fall back down to the 80s, and there will be a 75% chance of storms. Continuing on into the five-day forecast, you can see that we have lots of sun coming our way. Friday, you can count on sunny skies with a high of 74 and a low of 56. If you are planning on staying in Iowa City for the Cyhawk game, you want to try to get outside as we are expecting another sunny day with highs in the 80s and a low in the upper 60s. Closing out the weekend and continuing into next week, 
We will be looking forward to more summer weather as both Sunday and Monday are looking fairly sunny with highs in the upper 80s. So hot guys, make sure you're getting outside and enjoying the nice warm weather while it lasts. Noah, back to you. Thank you, Claire. Flavored vape pods are going up in smoke. On Wednesday, President Trump banned the production of non-tobacco flavored pods. Over 450 cases of lung illness have been reported by the CDC. The policy has not yet been enacted, but it is expected to be in the next two months. Now, it is rivalry week here on the University of Iowa campus, and all the students are excited for that big Iowa State versus Iowa game. Let's toss it over to Zach Lohman in the sports studio to find out more. Zach? That's right, Noah. We are almost the weekend, meaning the longest awaited Iowa versus Iowa State game in just days away. Both are anxiously awaiting perhaps the most exciting game in the country this weekend. But we know more, we'll know more how Hawkeye fans are feeling when the Hawks come to town. In the words of DITV Sports Pro Director Lucy Rodine, all is fair in love and war, and especially during Cyhawk Week. Let's see how she strip, um, went through Ames campus. Hey guys, it's Lucy. I'm actually on my way to Ames right now. I've got my trusty sidekick, Maddie, with me. Today, we're going behind enemy lines. It should be a lot of fun, so stay tuned. Lucy, are you nervous? No. I've been training my whole life for this. This just feels wrong. I'm just an Iowa State student at Iowa State University with my other Iowa State University student friends. Hey fellow Iowa State student, big game this weekend, right? Oh yeah. Go Hawks, right? What? What? What'd you say? What did you? What did you hear me say? Hawks. What? Big Cyclone fan over here? Definitely. So obviously, I mean, we know this season, Nate Stanley's just been balling out for us. You think he's going to have a good game against Iowa? There's no way he won't. AJ Epinesa, the heart and soul of your defense. Mm -hmm. How do you think he's going to do this weekend? Well, I think he's going to really crush them. AJ Epinesa anchoring that defensive line. Just You think he's going to get after Iowa's quarterback this weekend? I hope so. <laughs> It'd be nice to see. AJ Epinesa, what do you think he's going to do to that Iowa offensive line? Probably going to do better than the Hawkeyes. You know what? I would say that A.J. Epinesa is going to do better than the Hawkeyes. You and I know this. At Iowa State, we just love Ricky Stanzi. How much does he mean to this program? Too much. Everyone here just knows the legend of Ricky Stanzi. Just how much do students love him? Everybody loves him, man. I mean, even I know him, and I don't watch the sport that much. That's how much of a legend he is. We just yeah, love man. Ricky Stanzi. Love it or leave it. Think I'd make a good guest picker? I think you would make a great guest picker. I think they, they're really missing out if they don't pick you. Exactly. College game day. I hope you're watching this. I would make a great guest picker. What's your message to those those lame old Iowa fans? That they need to go home or stay there already. All right. Stay in Iowa City. Fair enough. Let's go back to Iowa City. Much better. Well, I'm sure they're going to be so happy to have her back. Another team is entering their fall season, and unlike Iowa State fans, Iowa Volleyball knows exactly how they're going into their upcoming matchups. Although they lost both Colorado and Washington, they established a new mindset that helped them secure a third set victory against the Huskies. DITV sports reporter Allie Green has the inside scoop on how volleyball is switching up their strategy. Iowa Volleyball is back, but with new changes in coaching and captains, the Hawks are redefining their strategy and nailing down points. This past weekend, the Hawks lost both matches. However, they were able to pull off a win in one set. Coach Brown claims that a change in their mindset was all they needed to turn things around. Uh, we just started breaking down this set a little bit more. To, um, so sometimes it can come overwhelming when you're trying to come back to focus on t get 25 points. So instead, we split the uh, set into three segments. As long as Iowa can improve during each section of the game, they are bound to score solid points on the court and maybe earn a win. Um, the beginning is pretty much the first 15 points, and then the middle is 15 to 20, and then the end is the last five points. Uh, so we maintain our focus and continue to uh, gradually add something or add someone um, as we progress through the set. As long as Iowa can improve during each section of the game, they are bound to score solid points on the court and maybe earn a win. As they head to the South Dakota tournament, they hope to continue this mindset and further drive their game. As Big Ten opponents approach, this scoring mindset will be the key to help the Hawkeyes succeed this season.
reporting from Harbor Hawkeye Arena, Allie Green, DITV Sports. For DITV, I'm Noah Gowdy. Have a great day, Iowa City.